Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, I am so glad you're here with us. The purpose of my channel is to create a home that you love using budget-friendly decor to make our home that warm and cozy and inviting space that we all crave. So today's video, I'm very excited for this. It's a DIY IKEA hack and it is this thing right behind me. I'm gonna totally say the name wrong. I think it's called the Regis I don't really know, but it is a beautiful hutch and I actually went into the Ikea store and I saw that they had one on display and I love seeing how they style these things, but I knew that I could take this to the next level. I like that we can take something so simple like this hutch and turn it into something that looks designer and very high end. So we see these types of hutches all over the place. Crate and Barrel has one that's almost $2,000. Studio McGee in their living room, they have beautiful black built-in ones that look similar to this. Now this one is $400. It does come in white and also like Ikea's black brown version. This one was originally a white one and I DIY'd it. It is now Sherwin-Williams Agreeable Gray, which is a very beautiful gray taupe color. It's a nice warm color. A lot of designers and homeowners use it because it just looks good in any space. I also think that this would look good in black as well. I just had a lot of black going on in other places in my home, so I decided to do something different and I love the way that the agreeable gray looks on it. But I love that if you need extra storage in your home, this is a great option because I think that you can put kitchen items in here, glasses, plates, bowls, and I think that they would look amazing as beautiful decor. So this was $400. I will say that by the time it was all done, I probably spent almost $500. There was tax. I elevated this by adding puck lights. But those were $30 for a pack of six and I did use two packages so that was about $60. I already had the paint so I did not need to go purchase that. I will link to what I can in the description below. I love to make sure that you don't have to go scour the internet for these items and anything that I can I want to share that with you. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through this DIY project. Before I had a different Ikea shoe cabinet here, and this one worked well, but you could see I had plenty of space to fill it with something bigger. So we put this together. Okay, I'll be honest, my husband put this together for me, but it does come with the doors. Sometimes with Ikea things, you have to purchase things separately, but the $400 price tag, it came with everything you see. And my husband put this together in one day, and I was so excited when it was finally up. I could see it in place and see what it would look like. However, one thing always leads to another, doesn't it? And I realized that I would have to move the curtain rods over a little bit. They were just too far in, so we had to take a few extra minutes. Okay, it might have taken an hour <laughs> to fix the curtain rods first. So the crazy person that I am, I decided to start painting everything at nine o'clock at night. I was just so excited. I couldn't wait to get started. So I got the doors all ready and I do use green painter's tape. It's called frog tape to tape off the glass parts and I also taped off part of the hutch too. I just wanted to make sure that everything was safe and I didn't get any primer or paint on anything. So as you can see, I am just taping around the outer edges. I wasn't going to paint the inside at all, only the outside. So I just covered up the areas that I didn't want to paint. Now a little trick with Ikea furniture, if you use this bin primer 
the shellac base. It is really good for Ikea furniture because it has that coating on it and this will help your paint stick really well. So one thing to keep in mind with this is you need to stir it really good because a lot of that paint will settle at the bottom. So just stir it a few times while you're doing your project. I did get a cheaper paintbrush for this. I wasn't sure how the shellac would be on it. I didn't want to use my nice brushes. So on these little edges, I did use a paintbrush and on the top and the sides, I used a smaller roller just to give it a nice finish. You will only need to do one coat of this primer, but if you wanted to paint the inside of an Ikea product, this primer would be great to use on that as well. So here you can see how thin this primer is. It is dripping a lot. It is very thin compared to a regular primer that you would use. So I started with the base of the hutch and then I went and primed the doors and by the time I was done with the doors, the hutch was dry and ready for me to paint. So as I mentioned earlier, I used Sherwin-Williams Agreeable Gray. It's just a beautiful gray taupe color very warm and soothing and calming it is very popular for good reason it just looks amazing and i actually love painting projects i have repainted the inside of my homes many times and i just love what a difference you can make so you can see here the color of the agreeable gray versus the primer which is just a regular white and it just looks beautiful just make sure that you get like all the creases really good and that you spread the paint out so that there's not big clumps of it anywhere and i want you to know that it's not all glamorous all the time i had to bend over like this to reach the insides of them and by the end of this i was so sore <laughs> So I did do one coat of the primer and two coats of the agreeable gray and in the morning if there were any spots that needed a little touch up I did do that as well. You want to wait about five minutes after you've done your coat and then you can take off the tape. I like to take it off while it's still a little wet because if the tape and the paint dry together for too long you might rip some of the paint off. At this point, it was 12.30 in the morning, so I decided to call it quits for the night, and the last thing that I had to do was paint the sides of the hutch and the top. So we did anchor this to the wall at the top. It came with brackets to do that. It is very front heavy when you open the doors, so you do want to make sure that you anchor it to the wall. And this is what it looked like with the paint done and the doors on, but I am not done. I knew that I was gonna take this to the next level, like I said before, and I am going to do that by using these solid pine lattice molding. And you can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's. It cost us about 20-ish dollars for all of these. And I am gonna use this as trim pieces and it is gonna look fantastic. And I didn't even prime these. I did end up needing about three coats of paint. So these will come in one long piece and you will need to cut them at your house. And I did have my husband help me with the first few. I was so nervous about getting them level. But after a few, I ended up being able to do it by myself. I used liquid nails on the back. So you put it in like a caulking gun and just squirt some on the back of the lattice strips. And some of it will kind of squeeze out when you press down the trim. And I just wiped it off with a wet paper towel because I didn't want any left behind. I didn't have to hold these there for very long. We made sure that they were a pretty tight fit. So I just pressed down for maybe 15 seconds and longer if you feel like it needs a little bit more security. And as you can see, I used a smaller level just to make sure that they lined up and weren't crooked. And now it is time to start adding lights to our beautiful hutch. 
I think the lights really elevated this to the next level. The amazing thing about these puck lights is they are on a remote, so they are easy to turn on and off. The remote also lets you control the brightness of the lights, so you can turn them down and you can have them really bright. There's also another setting to like do like a strobe light effect, which I don't need that. But the great thing about these puck lights is they are plug in. So you don't need to worry about changing batteries out or if the lights will start going dim after a few hours because the batteries are dying. These are plug in, which is great. I think this turned out beautiful. And again, I think it would also be amazing and black, but honestly, you could paint this in any color. A green would also be nice. And you can do your lattice strips differently than I did, so it could be a completely different look when you're done. I had so much fun decorating this. I did get a few new items from Target and Hobby Lobby that I put in here. And as you can see, as I put things in, I will rearrange things as I realize what I want in there and what I don't. I really tried to keep it mostly kitchen items. I ended up with some bowls and cookbooks and a few different odds and ends. If you had glasses or beautiful dishes to display, those would be amazing in here as well. And I wanted to leave you with the finished product. I love how it turned out. I kept it fairly simple. I didn't want it to be too cluttered. As you can see, I have little groupings and I think that it just looks amazing like that. I even have a empty shelf so that in the next coming weeks and months, if I find something, I can add it to it. being here today. I hope you enjoyed this DIY hack and I hope that it sparks creativity in you for you to change up something in your own home and take it from simple to more high end and I can't wait to see you back here soon.